And welcome back to GBS Morning Extra. As I promised you earlier today, we're going to discuss matters of politics. And our guest in, is none other than Mr. Omulo Jr., who is an ANC youth, a national ANC youth leader. And good morning, Mr. Omulo. Good morning. Uh, how have you been doing? Yeah, sure, indeed, and that is what uh, I think at this time we would say a good patriot will do because uh, we are all concerned about this situation and, uh, you know, letting our guards down would mean also endangering our own families and ourselves. Mr. Muller, I'd like first to, uh, you know, engage you very briefly. Uh, your take, if you're asked, on a scale of 1 to 10, how is the government uh, doing in terms of uh, managing the situation, giving also putting into consideration what recently happened after the president's uh, announcement to decide and close the borders to Somalia and Tanzania. We show a sharp reaction, actually, very aggressive reaction, from, the, from our uh, Tanzanian uh, brothers. I, I think I can give it a uh, fault in that of uh, Moana, because uh, first, uh, the president has been Yes, indeed. And uh, we saw the reaction from the Tanzanians where on the very day that the president announced, you know, the closure of the border that evening, uh, the Minister of Health actually was at the Namanga border and explained and was very categorical, insisting that especially truck drivers from Kenya, that they will only be allowed to bring their goods up to the border and it's up to, you know, whoever, you know, ordered the, the cargo from the Tanzanian side to come and pick it up from the border. But then at the same time, and on the same day, you see President Magufuli in another event, you know, talking about how they've uh, agreed with Uganda to bring in sugar, tons of thousands of sugar. Is this a good sign in terms of our bilateral relations? And is the COVID-19 becoming a reason to divide us again in the East Africa uh, community? I think recently, um, Magufuli has not been so much keen in, uh, in terms of uh, East African uh, integration, mm -hmm. and especially the agreements, in terms of trade agreements in East Africa and Central Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you remember that even the president had a meeting with other heads of state mm -hmm. on how they can curb this uh, the coronavirus, mm -hmm. but uh, Magufuli was not present. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a sign that uh, our food is not ready to parent, and um, it's not good for us in terms of nutrition. And uh, the minister himself, who was speaking yesterday, uh, the minister is not serious. In fact, you can say that was a careless statement because uh, what the president said was meant uh, you know, to prevent us from getting countries, mm -hmm. which is also supposed to help, get, to, to help Tanzanians also to, uh, from getting uh, COVID-19 from criminals by doing testing at the border. So the minister is just playing politics, uh, which of course is not good for us. But even if it means that uh, we will not be able to take our goods to Tanzania, but our health staff first. I don't think it is a doing trade in Tanzania put us helpless the extent that our people die because of uh, disease that is in the world. So I think we can still do business with other countries, those who are winning. But I think we should also still uh, talk to Tanzania. The president needs to speak to Kofi so that they can have uh, 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 a converging point where they will be able to agree on how to do business. Mm -hmm. Well, indeed, very true. And those bilateral ties are very important especially in the east african integration but then i would like to you know draw your attention also to another matter that uh, has been of e almost equal importance but seem to be ignored by the members of the uh, by the fourth estate this is the issue of floods you know floods so far has claimed more than 160 plus lives in the country but then only yesterday we see the 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 mini the, the cabinet secretary eugene Wamalia, you know you know, flagging off some, some trucks and saying that this will take relief to people. But this thing is wreaking havoc the whole, in the whole country. The government hasn't really done uh, as expected, you know, according to uh, Kenyans' expectations in terms of responding to this situation, have it? Yes, I think this is a failure by the uh, ministry's concern because uh, uh, currently, Kenya is concentrating on the global pandemic, which is as wrecked the whole, the whole world. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Kenya is facing a number of issues uh, that needs to be attended to, especially that the floods that has really taken lives, and also even the locusts. I'm told the locusts are still available. Sure. And uh, there are also other issues that need to be addressed. So the ministry's concern must now take up uh, this task seriously. And I think they should also be there. Uh, they should not be underlooked because they are small issues. These are big issues that need to be addressed by the government. Mm -hmm. Well, indeed. And uh, it's very important also that you mention the issue of the locust also. And uh, I was talking to another expert the other day, and he told me, uh, uh, for lack of better words, that the locusts that we're experiencing in Kenya right now are born here in Kenya. You know, when the swarms passed Kenya, they laid eggs, and now we are having, like, you know, millions of locusts that have actually hatched and are wreaking havoc. Right now, already, the, the floods, you know, there's the coronavirus pandemic, but then, on top of that, at the locusts, what are Kenyans faced with? Yes, uh, there are also a lot of issues, especially the economy is not economies right now is, uh, is going down mm -hmm. and you know there are a lot of uh, Kenyans who are jobless there are also people who are facing anger uh, which uh, needs also to be addressed and also there are also other issues that uh, are from uh, the stage of facts that also need to be addressed so apart from locust uh, this is just a failure of the ministries because I cannot blame it squarely on the, the president of the government Sure. 
Well, indeed, and uh, when you speak about that, uh, it all trickles down to governance. But then, when you talk about governance, you cannot talk about governance without political stability. And this is where I want now to bring you in. Uh, and before we, we get into that, I would like us to just uh, play a small video. And this video actually uh, is of, uh, was of big surprise, not just to me, but I think to many Kenyans, uh, when we saw three former senators come out. Of course, one of them is uh, known, Boni Handwale, but then we have Mr. Mutama and Mr. Omar coming into the picture on, you know, taking defense for the uh, deputy president, and which actually seemed to surprise many. Let's listen into this video, and then uh, I'd like us to, I'd like to hear your comment on, on this. Baada ya kukundua kwamba, mweshmiwa naibu wa rais wa jamuri yetu ya Kenya, mweshmiwa uh, William Samoy Ruto, amepata umarufu sana, sana, sana katika eneo rais uhuru kinyata na potoka. Na hii imeweza kusababisha mambo haya kuangaliwa vile watasukuma katiba kuibandirisha ili wawese tu kumfungia mtu mmoja anaitwa William Samoy Ruto kusimama na kuchakuliwa kwa, na wa Kenya mbae ya na umarufu saidi. So what we've seen lately is a victimization in politics and a crude sense of political machinations that we have never seen in this country in a long time. And when you look at all this, it's not, it's not about corruption, it's about power play. Ni lazima iweke selekali yake imala, wale watu ambao wanafanyia ya kazi wawe ni 100% royal to him, not to anybody else. Well, there we have it. You know, Mutama, Omar, on the other side, you know, blaming the president and uh, the kind of politics that he's playing, you know, it's, they're calling that power play, they're saying Ruto has gained popularity and that's why, you know, everybody is beating up on him, just one person. On the other side, we have Maina Kamanda also, the former Sare MP who is coming out and uh, Kamkunji MP who comes out and says, hey, look, the president should bring people close to him who are loyal to him and not just anyone. Mr. Omule, what is your take on the current situation that we've seen on the Jubilee politics? Well, uh, 
having said that, we saw the purge that took place uh, in the Senate, which also still we expect, at least by Wednesday, that's tomorrow, uh, between today and tomorrow, uh, we are also expecting to see some changes. And uh, the talks of the, the uh, Deputy Speaker of, of, of the uh, Senate also to be replaced, which we really don't know, but then there are, there are these kind of talks. Besides that, there have also been talks of coalitions, and which have been very public, uh, the coalition with Kanu. But recently in the dailies, among the people who've been put in the lineup of the coalitions, people who are expected to be working with Uhuru, you know, uh, I don't know if it's in 2022 or post-2022. One of them, you know, the face of uh, your own party leader, Musalia Mudavadi, was floated there by the fourth estate. Is there something that uh, ANC is also uh, thinking to do together with uh, the uh, Jubilee or together with Uhuru? Uh, I, I think my party leader was But then when you talk about NASA uh, or Mulo Jr., there are a lot of, uh, you know, skeptics who will say that uh, NASA ceased to be. And also we had this debate earlier when after the handshake, when there was a fallout, seemingly fallout from the NASA coalition, we had uh, the, you know, learned friend, uh, James Orengo, say that NASA was uh, never a post, you know, election uh, vehicle to take them to state house. It was just a means of campaign. And since then, we've not seen you guys in the NASA work in unison, if I may say that, apart from just the papers. Is it just the papers or is there still some ideology that is 
holding together uh, the NASA coalition? It is not an ideology. Uh, coalition is, uh, is, 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 is a serious document that uh, is within the law that uh, is signed and also deposited uh, by registered Register. parties. Mm -hmm. So as much as uh, uh, you know, what Oregon is saying is just uh, no politics, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, remember there's a time when the, the, there was a by-election Yes. Uh, who, who was opposing the mm -hmm. fact is on record and mm -hmm. said that after the election they will uh, uh, you know, resign from us mm -hmm. they will leave us yes. but we have not seen mm -hmm. uh, on, on paper, we have not seen this taken as an action mm -hmm. you know, these are some of uh, what you call political theatrics that people speak just for public benefit but uh, NASA is still strong mm -hmm. uh, NASA is Mm -hmm. So NASA is strong and it's still a coalition. Until then, that uh, we will be able now to say that we are, we are no longer part of NASA. And remember, ANC is the founder. Mr. Mdawid is the founder of NASA. Mm -hmm. So he's still uh, there. He's still uh, very happy with uh, NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I don't know if uh, everybody uh, will agree with you, Bwana Mulo, when you say that NASA is still strong. As much as we would want to say that it is just uh, mere politics, uh, Kalonzo is on record saying that they are looking to work with, uh, uh, you know, Kanu, and they've, uh, you know, had some discussions, some discussions about a post-election coalition. But then, uh, to many, it seemed like NASA is just a legal document that still holds, but not, not the spirit of, of the parties that uh, came together to form the coalition, is it? You know, post uh, election coalitions mm -hmm. or post you know, hardship coalitions. Yes. You know, the fact that China uh, had a hardship in the world without involving the NASA partners uh, is a uh, sort of uh, discussion that we've had long, long time. And, uh, you know, it's something that uh, a politician, they, they, they do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I believe um, what we believe is, is, is the law. So if the law says that uh, NASA as a, as, as a coalition it is, a, it is a coalition that uh, you know, was supposed to form the government, that is what is still by just mm -hmm. like in Lee. Mm -hmm. In Lee, uh, there were so many political parties that were, were falling into the mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, even Kalonza himself, there's still even a case in court where we are demanding some political funding from uh, ODM. From the ODM. Yeah, still holding up. Bonamulo Jr., if I may just engage you before we uh, finish here. Right now, there are talks that, uh, you know, Uhuru is trying to push Ruto out of uh, the government, out of the, you know, the government. We've seen uh, people lost their position, but then, I don't know, but then it's, there is word that uh, these are allies of the deputy president. Is there a possibility? Are we looking at a possibility of the deputy president resigning? Because facing a sack, I doubt that would uh, most likely happen. Yeah, the constitution does not allow for sacking. Uh, the president does not have powers to sack Ruto uh, unless uh, it's impeached by, you know, through uh, uh, all uh, the parliaments. Yes. Uh, but I believe that. Um, 
you know, if you if you look at history, uh, you know, when Moy was the vice president of Kenyatta, yes. Moy was very loyal and uh, he was ready to offer his service mm -hmm. uh, to President Kenyatta. That is the same thing they the two don't to have done. And I believe the reason why they, you know they are falling out is that you know these supporters who are so careless with mm -hmm. uh, what they speak in public. And also, they were not ready to support the president's agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, the president, after having, uh, you know, was uh, a handshake with Raila Odinga, yes. they were supposed to support it in totality. Mm -hmm. But uh, you find that even the president had been complaining initially. When you remember when he said that uh, uh, Ruto and Tangatanga, where, you know, the end day, Tangatanga was born. Yeah. So I believe that Ruto has not been loyal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president is just trying to consolidate his support base uh, to ensure that uh, these members of parliament will be able to support his agenda, especially the Big Four agenda, mm -hmm. and also in the revival of the economy. So, um, Ruto resigning is, is not a good option because if he resigns, then uh, you will be seen as a, a weak person. Mm -hmm. So, you need to just to fight uh, from within because that is what he will be able to do. Because if he resigns, then he will lose. The deputy president has been accused by supporters of the president of insubordination. And besides that, he's also been accused of starting a very early campaign. And do you think it's a good idea to start campaigning and, you know, showing your boss outrightly that, you know, you want his job? And uh, was that a smart, is that a smart move or was that a smart move by Ruto? And maybe before I let you go, uh, Bonamulo, I would like us to touch on this. Your party leader have been seen recently uh, of being very spontaneous in terms of uh, responding to national issues, maybe statements made uh, in the national uh, spectrum. But then uh, the question one would want to ask themselves is, uh, is Musalia Mudavadi now the official opposition? Because we've seen the, you know, the ODM side very quiet, and uh, since the handshake, they have not been very candid in terms of, uh, you know, criticizing the government, you know, blowing whistles in terms of uh, issues to do with corruption and any other areas that the government is not dealing straight with Kenyans. But then, 
Ismu Salia Mudaba, the, the official opposition, and what is his policy for this country going forward? I think my party leader has been very consistent on the issue of economy mm -hmm. and uh, corruption. And a number of numerous uh, you know, uh, situations whereby he has been able to address these issues publicly, and he has stated his stand on how uh, you know, the Kenyan government is supposed to act, mm -hmm. especially on reviving the economy. He has said that there is a need for a summarization Uh, priorities on, on, on development, on how we will be able now to, to uh, develop stimulus package on, uh, uh, on long term, not even short term, mm -hmm. and, and, and create employment. Mm -hmm. And my party leader as an economist is very focused and uh, he said it uh, you know, clearly that uh, the government needs to, 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 to stop uh, you know, this borrowing mm -hmm. that uh, are not good for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a party leader, he has stood with Kenyans and uh, uh, he's uh, been very consistent as opposition leader mm -hmm. and because that is what we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Being an opposition leader, you don't need to. You know, Kenyans believe that uh, the way Raila does as opposition leader, mm -hmm. where uh, you know, things have changed. And, uh, you know, party lead, my party leader has been very consistent mm -hmm. and uh, the way he has Mm -hmm. uh, there's also an, another issue that he, has, uh, he hasn't really weighed in on uh, much strongly, and it's an issue that is happening right now as we speak. There's the demolitions that have been uh, taking place, and some actually took place in the middle of the night, leaving about 5,000 uh, families out in the cold. Recently in Ruai, uh, Kariobangi South, that, uh, the Kariobangi South sewage estate, you know, what is your party's take on that? I mean, quite inhumane. Civil society have tried to make some noise, but not very much. But then the government continues to just carry out these demolitions, leaving Kenyans, you know, stranded at this time when they are facing a pandemic, there is rain, and then on top of that, throw them out, in, you know, in the cold, women and children. Well, uh, Bonamulo Jr., finally, as we finish, I would just like to have your you know, final comments on what, uh, you, you know, your projection of what Kenyan politics is most likely to face after this pandemic. Right now, there is already a bill in the Senate uh, proposing for changes, uh, the amendment bill of 2020. Uh, do you think that uh, the government, uh, if I may say that, because they are known to be lobbying, uh, pushing for the uh, changes the BBI document. Do you think that they are, you know, under they're, they're playing their cards under the table and uh, they're expecting to surprise uh, their opponents in terms of uh, 
passing the popular uh, you know amendments in the in the in the in the in the senate Well, uh, that's uh, Mr. Omulo Jr., the National uh, Youth Leader, ANC. Indeed, very much, uh, we are really grateful that you could find time uh, to join us this morning and share your thoughts on uh, quite a number of issues that are affecting our country right now. And uh, we do also wish you the best. Uh, please stay at home and stay safe if you have to. <laughs> Thank you very much, Omulo. We'll see you again next time. Well, viewer, uh, we have come to the end of our discussion this morning, as you had very well uh, from Omulo. You know, quite a number of issues that are dividing Kenyans still, but then we hope that uh, politics does not divide us as a country. And also, there's a lot of expectation also uh, still in the Senate. We also have uh, the issue of the referendum bill. What kind of a document is it? We also still are waiting to hear from the BBI team itself. Uh, from the proposals that they had uh, received. The time is also running out. We, we, are, we also are uh, aware of the fact that uh, the planned rallies for the BBI were not able to be carried out as you know, were expected due to the COVID-19. So we don't know if there'll be an extension of submissions and so on and so forth. But then what we just hope is that uh, politics does not you know, make Kenyans, does not divide Kenyans and that Politics also does not, you know, sway our mind away from the priorities and the, you know, important things that we need, we need to do. But also something that I would like to also just to mention uh, is uh, the ANC leader, uh, Musalia Mudavadi, uh, has always been very candid and has always been consistent on the trend that the government has entered, you know, the, the borrowing, which him himself as an economist, when you listen to him, is really dangerous to the country's economy and also to the future because if we continue to do this according to his own words then we will find ourselves not even having an economy in the future so i believe that uh, all this can be put into perspective and uh, would like to discuss this more and more as we continue thank you very much if you are joining us and also for if uh, from wherever you're watching us for any comments suggestions or opinion you can send us an sms on two double one double four our Twitter handle is at GBS uh, TV Africa. Our Facebook is GBS TV Africa. Our YouTube uh, channel is also uh, GBS TV Africa. My name is Timothy Omondi. Do have yourself a lovely day and see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll actually be having activists in studio, of course, virtually. And also I'll be, to I'll be talking to victims 
of the evictions in Ruai and Dandora and also Kariobangi. And uh, we'll be just, you know, looking at the dynamics. What, you know, how did they get to, f uh, to get there? How did we get there? How, uh, why is the government evicting them in such a way? And also they'll share with us their own personal experience. So for now, let's say bye-bye and God bless you.